Among the tropical wonders of Southeast Asia lies an island state barely visible on the world map going by the name of Singapore. Unbeknown to the populace of the country, their reputation as a culinary heaven would be spread far and wide with a single dish. No, not you. Yes, you. Singapore noodles. Because I'm making Singapore noodles for the nation. It's so gorgeous and it's so delicious. It's a Singaporean dish. <laughs> to the foreigners coming to Singapore looking for a dish called Singapore noodles, I'm sorry to say, but there's no such dish here. I mean, think about it. Is there a dish called American rice in America? Are you willing to face the wrath of Italians by calling ragu alla bolognese Italian noodles? My grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> you know, what, you know, it's... Singapore noodles is a dish with at least three variations, with the most popular version being this deluxe stir fried noodle with curry powder being the most important ingredient. It's supposed to be a one dish meal. So there's meat, usually char siu and prawns, vegetables of any kind, and rice vermicelli. This version is likely to be Hong Kong Cantonese in origin, and is now popular in very Asian countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. If you're looking for a recipe, I recommend checking out Chinese Cooking Demystified, which I will link below. So how did this abomination that doesn't even exist in my country come to represent our food culture? Turns out there's actually someone called Sheryl Ng who spent 5 years researching on Singapore noodles. You heard that right. 5 years. This entailed interviews with restaurants all over the world, reading research papers, newspaper archives, food media, and more than 5,000 Instagram poses hashtagged Singapore noodle. So let's start with the Singapore noodles we can't find in Singapore. That's right, when I said that this dish can't be found in Singapore, I lied. There is a dish called Sing Zhou Mi Fen which you can find at zi cha stores and some Chinese restaurants. Zi cha stores are basically hawker stores with Chinese restaurant-like menus and serve a wide variety of dishes. Sing Zhou Mi Fen literally translates to Star Island Rice Vermicelli. And Star Island or Sing Zhou is Singapore's name before the country gained independence in 1965. Most people don't know this bit of history. So as far as most Singaporeans are concerned, Singapore noodles don't exist. These are the ingredients that make up the Sing Zhou Mi Fen at Circuit Road Hawker Centre. Mock char siu, prawns, bean sprouts, cabbage, eggs, chilies, and most importantly, no curry powder. Hui Kok Wai, one of the four heavenly kings of the local culinary scene in the 1960s and 70s. Look, I know how ridiculous the title sounds, it's basically the elite for Chinese cooking in Singapore. Anyway, he said that Singapore noodles was actually common in Singapore's Chinatown during the 1940s, and the stores that sold them were mostly Cantonese owned. These stores were called Da Pai Tong, the same thing as Zisha stores, just in Cantonese dialect. They sold it at Pearl's Market or Chin Chu Pasa, which is today's People's Park Complex. The Chinese used to hang out with their own dialect buddies, so it's mostly the Cantonese who came to the Pearl's Market. Back then, Singapore noodles had real char siu, prawns, onions, bean sprouts, spring onions, red chilies, and omelettes. But here's the most important part, curry powder wasn't a part of the dish back then. To make the dish even more elusive, Pao's market was destroyed by a fire in 1966 and most of the Ta Pai Tong had closed. For good. And this is the reason why Singapore noodles is almost unknown in today's Singapore. Anybody up for a petition to change the name to Star Island Rice Vermicelli? But from this, we know that there is a definite Cantonese connection. We also know that Hong Kong, a very Cantonese con city, is the only Asian place with Singapore noodles flavoured with curry powder. By the 1940s, Singapore noodles, or Sing Zhou Chao Mi as it is called in Hong Kong, can be found in cha chan things and restaurants. Unlike in Singapore, the noodles were considered expensive at $1 until the 1960s. In the same period, wonton mee is only 30 cents. Many cha chan things serve Hong Kong style Western cuisine. And what's a very British ingredient that's also in Singapore noodles? Curry powder. At the same time, there were many curry dishes popular in Hong Kong like curry beef brisket, curry fish balls, and curry pork chops. So it's not a stretch to say that they added curry powder to the noodles too. But some authors and academics would say that Singapore noodles came from Southeast Asian immigrants setting up restaurants in the 1940s and 1950s. Nobody really knows if this version had curry powder. So it's still possible that curry was added later. Wait a minute, if Singapore noodles didn't come from Singapore, and it also didn't come from Hong Kong, then where did it come from? There's just one more stop we need to visit, Malaysia. 
In Malaysia, Sing Chow Mee Fan is a pretty common dish in Thai chops, which is what Malaysians call Zhisha places in Cantonese. Here is an urban legend told to Sheryl Ng by a Kuala Lumpur food researcher. In the 1940s, a pretty influential customer stopped in front of a Thai chow, which is in the midst of closing up. The owner of the Thai chow didn't really want to offend the customer by refusing to serve him. So the chef cooked up the dish using leftovers from rice noodles, char siu, bean sprouts, fried shrimps, eggs and chili. The customer liked it so much that he asked what the dish is called. To make the dish sound expensive and premium, the Thai chow chef called it Sing Chow Chow because Singapore was richer than Kuala Lumpur at that time. There's also one more important detail here. Malaysian Singapore noodles uses ketchup or was it sauce? Worcestershire. 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 What? One 68-year-old Thai chow owner recalls his father adding Worcestershire sauce to Singapore noodles since the 1950s. Throughout the years, Worcestershire sauce is replaced by the cheaper ketchup. So now, we have three versions of Singapore noodles. One version found in pre-independent Singapore without curry powder. The second found in Malaysia with ketchup or the Shire sauce. And the third with curry powder found in Hong Kong and the West. All linked together by a Cantonese origin and all were present in the 1940s. Only one question remains. Why is the curry powder version the one most known to the West? You have to thank communism for that. You see, after the Chinese Civil War, billions of mainland Chinese wanted to escape. But immigration was restricted by China and they could only go to Hong Kong or the Soviet Union. Most countries also refused to take Asians in. Then in the 1960s, the US, Canada and Australia relaxed their policies and welcomed the Chinese. Chinese immigrants then ran to these countries with their knowledge of food from Hong Kong. But once there, there were no employment opportunities except being a cook or laundromat. While China was busy with things like the Cultural Revolution, chefs in Hong Kong were able to continually improve on their culinary skills. So if you're going to be a chef, Hong Kong Cantonese was the way to go. It didn't even matter if you're not Cantonese. You're going to learn from the immigrants before you, who will teach you their formula to success using Hong Kong Cantonese food. And now, what we're talking is not part of Sheryl Ng's research. Turns out, Singapore noodles have similar partners in crime in Hong Kong Cantonese cuisine. Dishes of dubious origins adopting the names of countries that we don't come from. Like Swiss wings, Malay sponge cakes, and a dish eerily similar to Singapore noodles. With all of the ingredients being the same except the curry powder, called Xiamen noodles. Like Singapore noodles, nothing to do with Xiamen. And the main flavouring sauce is a sweet and sour sauce. That's right. This is basically the restaurant version of fast food chains calling their burgers things like samurai burgers after slapping a sauce on top of it. With teriyaki sauce. The Samurai Burger is back. Discover the legendary taste of Japan. <laughs> Singapore noodles might just be a name created by marketing. But fat boy, at this point all you have done is given us more questions and not answers. And you are absolutely right. Because when I said that there were three types of Singapore noodles, I lied again. Sheryl Ng discovered that in Estonia and places like Latvia, Indian and Nepali immigrants are selling Singapore noodles at the Asian restaurants. Their Singapore noodles contain wheat noodles instead of rice vermicelli, chicken or lamb and fish, egg, cabbage, carrots, turmeric powder, curry powder, MSG and a dash of orange food coloring. No char siu, no prawns or other common vegetables like bean sprouts and onions in the three versions previously mentioned. It's a completely different dish with the same name. Who is spreading the name of Singapore? How is one dish shape-shifting into so many forms? So many questions but no answers. The three big questions now remain. How did Worcester sauce and ketchup end up in Malaysia's Singapore noodles? What type of curry powder was first used in Hong Kong? Was it Indian, British or Chinese? How many forms does Singapore noodles really have? Find out probably never, since it might take another 5 years before more answers come. Oh, and a lot of information are cut out for this video since that's just how video making works. So do check out the original blog post if you want to know everything.